Will you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> I'd be willing to bet, if I were a betting man, that before the angel Gabriel showed up in Nazareth, nothing had ever happened there important enough to write home or anywhere else about, assuming anybody not from Nazareth ever went there. To call it a city in Galilee, as Luke does, is the kind of embellishing a chamber of commerce would try to help bring in a little business. But to tell the truth, Nazareth would have needed to double its population and then some to have pushed themselves up to a thousand inhabitants when the Virgin Mary was among the maidens in the village. There was nothing special about Nazareth until the angel came to town. But the Virgin Mary lived there. But was Mary special before the angel came to town to her? Was she the toast or even the talk of the town before Gabriel came down for a visit? Not likely. Think this through with me. It's all but certain that all the unmarried girls in Nazareth, of whom there wouldn't have been many, were virgins. It's also certain that almost all the unmarried Jewish girls in all the villages in Galilee were virgins. Girls were virgins before and until they went to live with their husbands. That's how it was. It was a different time, a different culture. In that sense, Mary was not special, and so neither was Nazareth. But the angel is sent by God to her. Of all the virgins in all the villages in Galilee or all the world, doesn't that make her special? Well, yes. But in a particular way, we'll get into in a minute. When the angel interrupts whatever Mary is doing, he greets her in an unusual way. He doesn't call her by name. That will come later. He calls her favored one and tells her simply, the Lord is with you. But notice that Mary doesn't say, it's about time, or what kept you, or I've been expecting you. You see, Mary doesn't consider herself special. She hasn't been wandering impatiently around Nazareth every day waiting for an angelic messenger to show up and announce the beginning of the big event. She just knows she is the only person qualified to pull off. No, this is all news to her. And her first instinct is to wonder whether there are going to be details at 11. Here is a fine, faithful young girl having the most amazing spiritual experience in her life. And she is terrified. Her mind is reeling in a frantic effort to make sense of it all. You want more out of your relationship with God? Be careful what you ask for. So what did Mary do to be favored by God? What is it about her that would cause her Lord to choose to be with her, for her? Perhaps nothing. Suppose that Mary had done nothing that countless others had not done. Suppose that Mary was no different morally, spiritually, or otherwise in any way that mattered from all the other young girls of her day or any day. Suppose that her finding favor with God was really just a matter of God choosing to find favor with her that it was all about God rather than her. 
Suppose it was just one of those random acts of godness. And then God's angel tells Mary what God's favor is going to mean for her. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you and you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. There will be no man involved in what always requires a man and it will start immediately so there will be no time for it to look like a man, in this case the new husband, there will be no time for it to look like this man has been involved in the proper and acceptable way or even in an improper and unacceptable way. And the angel is apparently not going to let anybody else in Nazareth in on what's going on. And that's how God shows his favor to this favored one. In a sense, God's favor is not so good for the one favored. But look again. If she accepts the favor, Mary will give birth to a boy that she will call Jesus and others will call the Son of the Most High, the Holy Son of God. If she accepts the favor, God will give Mary's child the throne of David to reign over the house of of Jacob forever and rule a kingdom that will never end. Not bad for a peasant girl from Nazareth. But how can this be since I am a virgin? Isn't it interesting? Mary thinks her virginity disqualifies her when it's the very thing God will use to make her forever favored, blessed, and special. This is impossible, except that nothing is impossible with God. And God is with you, Mary, favoring you with the impossible possibility that will change you and Nazareth and the world forever. And all of this should make a crazy kind of sense, really. Mary, after all, is a daughter of Israel. God has been sending angels to tell her people stuff for centuries. And for just as long, God has been giving children to members of the children of Israel who hadn't been able or shouldn't be able to have children. These are the chosen people, the favored people, if you will with whom God made covenants to prove that he would always be with them. And how did these chosen people find favor with God? Nobody knows. From the time they realized they were chosen, they also realized that there was nothing about them that made them worthy of being chosen. There was nothing about them that should have made God want to be with them any more than with any other people. And if you take all their sin and rebelliousness toward God into account, God probably should have wanted to be with them less than with other people. But they were chosen. They were favored. God was with them over and over again, year after year, century after century. Just because that's what God decided he would do. The favor of God was about God, not them. And the angel came to Mary and announced God's favor to her because God in his divine initiative and inscrutable wisdom chose to favor her above all others. The angel announced God's favor and his presence and the miracle that would show this favor to all the world. Behold, 
you will conceive and bear a son. And then he announced another miracle to show Mary that she wasn't the only one God was favoring. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, who was barren, has also conceived a son in her old age. And then Mary, whose first reaction to Gabriel's unexpected appearance was to be almost as tongue-tied as old Zachariah ended up being in the temple, Mary finally found her voice and her faith and responded with a behold of her own. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Mary had figured out something or been taught something as part of her Jewish heritage that finally caught up with her consciousness. To be favored by God is to be invited to serve him. To be with the God who has chosen to be with you requires your submission to his will. By embracing God's mission, Mary accepted God's favor. But remember, Gabriel, Gabriel announced God's favor before Mary confirmed her calling. Mary did not earn God's favor. She merely received it as a gift of grace. Mary found favor with God, but she wasn't, isn't the only one. God has been sending angels, divine messengers, both supernatural and completely human, to announce God's favor to all kinds of people all over the world. The message is always the same. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. And though there haven't been any more virgin births recorded, the promise of God is very much the same to everyone since that first announcement. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and you will conceive in your soul and bear in your life Jesus, the Holy Son of God. The coming of Christ, even more than the coming of an angel, is the assurance of God's favor to Mary and to you. It is the greatest demonstration of all that God is with you. Why should I be favored by God? Well, you shouldn't, but you are. And that's just the way it is, just the way God wanted it to be. But how can this be, since I am a, a what? Mary was a virgin, and she still conceived and bore the Savior. Elizabeth was too old to have a baby, and yet she did. Peter was too brash, and Paul was too sure of his theology and too effective in his persecution of the church, and everybody was too something that should have disqualified them from God's favor, and yet it did not. How can this be, since I am a scoundrel, a cynic, a coward, a crook, an addict, an invalid, a terrible, terrible sinner. Well, what does the virgin birth tell you? Nothing is impossible with God. Greetings, O favored ones. The Lord is with you. You, all of you, have found favor with God. No, you weren't that special but you are now because you are favored by God himself. You are special enough now to be the servants of the Lord. And if you are special now, just think how special it will be when you let God do the miracles in your life 
that he has planned for you to do. You will see that nothing is impossible with God. Will you be the servant of the Lord? All in favor, say I. Or better yet, let it be to me according to God's word.